let's take a closer look at butterfly valves. Butterfly valves are water supply control valves with gear operators to assist in opening and closing. A typical butterfly valve consists of several key components. The handwheel, stem, disc, valve body, and an indicator to show the valve's position. These valves operate using a circular gate, called a disc, mounted on a rod or stem inside the valve body. This disc is connected to the handwheel through a gear mechanism, which is why they're often referred to as butterfly gear valves. When the wheel is turned, the gear rotates the disc. When the disc is parallel to the pipe, water can flow in the pipe, and when the disc is turned perpendicular to the pipe, the flow is blocked. Unfortunately, the position of the disc inside the valve isn't visible during operation. To solve this, an external indicator paddle is attached to the disc. This paddle, located outside the valve, clearly shows whether the valve is open or closed. When the paddle is parallel to the pipe, the valve is open, and when the paddle is perpendicular to the pipe, the valve is closed and water cannot flow in the pipe. It's also important to note that the disc of a butterfly valve can extend beyond the valve body when it's operated. Because of this, designers and installers must ensure there is enough clearance around the valve for full movement. Placing elbows, tees, or other fittings too close can obstruct the disc, preventing it from opening or closing properly. The second type of control valve commonly used in fire protection systems is the OS and Y gate valve, which stands for outside screw and yoke. An OS and Y valve consists of several main components, including the stem, handwheel, yoke, valve body, gate, and lock nut. This valve features a threaded stem connected to a gate inside the valve body. The stem fits into a handwheel, which is supported by a yoke assembly. As explained in the previous video, control valves in fire protection systems must be of the indicating type, meaning their open or closed status should be easily identifiable at a glance. In OS and Y gate valves, this indicating function is achieved through visible stem movement. When the handwheel is turned, it drives the stem and with it the gate, up or down, opening or closing the valve. If you see the stem extended upward, the valve is open. In this position, the gate is lifted completely into the gate housing, allowing water to flow freely through the system without obstruction. To close the valve, the handwheel is turned in the opposite direction. This action drives the stem downward, lowering the gate until it seats firmly, blocking water flow entirely. A common question that often comes up is, what's the difference between butterfly valves and OS and Y gate valves? Let's break it down. Butterfly valves are generally used as a lighter and more cost-effective alternative to the OS and Y gate valve. From an installation standpoint, contractors often prefer butterfly valves because they're lightweight, take up less space, and are easier to install. This is especially helpful in zone control valve setups, where space is often limited. Butterfly valves also come pre-wired for electronic supervision, making it easy to monitor whether the valve is open or closed. While OS and Y valves can be electronically supervised, they typically require additional hardware to do so. But from a hydraulic design perspective, OS and Y valves have a key advantage. They create less friction loss. Here's why. OS and Y valves use a rising gate design. When open, the gate is lifted completely out of the water's path, allowing unrestricted flow and minimal pressure loss. Butterfly valves, on the other hand, have a disc that remains partially within the flow stream, even when open. This creates turbulence and friction, which increase system pressure demand. In this table, butterfly valves and OS and Y gate valves are briefly compared based on the criteria we previously discussed, including position indication, operation, flow characteristics, maintenance, space requirement, and cost considerations. 
According to the 2025 edition of NFPA 13, Table 28-2311 specifies the equivalent pipe lengths for various fittings and devices, unless manufacturer test data suggests otherwise. We touched on this earlier when discussing equivalent pipe length and its impact on hydraulic calculations. If you'd like a deeper dive, check out our YouTube video, Flow Rate and Pressure. As you can see, friction loss through butterfly valves is significantly higher, typically 3 to 10 times greater than OS and Y gate valves, depending on valve size. This matters in hydraulic design, especially when the sprinkler system is supplied directly from the municipal water line and available pressure is limited. In such cases, choosing an OS and Y valve instead of a butterfly valve can make a big difference. The lower friction loss of the OS and Y may allow the system to meet pressure requirements without needing a fire pump, saving cost and simplifying the overall design. Let's take a 3-inch valve as an example. For a butterfly valve of this size, the equivalent length is roughly 10 feet of pipe. For an OS and Y gate valve, it's only about one foot. That's a tenfold difference in pressure loss, an important factor when designing efficient fire protection systems. Let's clear up a common misconception. Do NFPA codes and standards actually specify where each type of control valve should be used? Or is that decision left to the designer? In general, NFPA codes and standards do not mandate which type of control valve must be used. The choice is typically left to the system designer based on factors like space, cost, and hydraulic performance. However, there are two important exceptions to this rule. Exception 1 applies to control valves installed on the suction side of a fire pump. According to Section 4.16.5 of NFPA 20, 2025 edition, a listed outside screw and yoke gate valve shall be installed in the suction pipe. This requirement helps minimize water turbulence before flow enters the fire pump. As we explained earlier, when an OS and Y gate valve is fully open, its gate is lifted completely out of the waterway, allowing smooth, undisturbed flow. However, the standard does allow for a butterfly valve to be used if it's installed at a sufficient distance from the pump suction flange. Specifically, if the butterfly valve is located at least 50 feet away, the turbulence can dissipate before the water reaches the pump ensuring stable flow. Exception 2 applies when pumps installed in series. According to Section 4.17.9 NFPA 20, 2025 edition, when pumps are installed in series, a butterfly valve shall not be installed between pumps. Why? Because the turbulence and pressure instability it creates could interfere with the performance of the second pump. Instead, a listed OS and Y gate valve must be used between pumps to ensure stable suction flow and reliable operation. These two exceptions highlight how valve selection can directly impact system performance, especially in fire pump configurations. While designers have flexibility in most cases, it's important to follow NFPA guidance where specific requirements apply. Post indicator valves, as one of the control valves installed outside the building, play a vital role in many fire protection systems. They are used to open or close the building's water supply from an accessible point outside the structure. There are two main types of post indicator valves. Vertical post indicator valve or yard post. These have their base buried underground and are operated with a lockable handle or wrench. Ground posts are commonly installed outdoors where the valve is located outside the building. Wall post indicator valve. They're used when the water main passes through a wall cavity and are operated by a hand wheel. However, they are generally less preferred because they're more vulnerable to damage if the building structure collapses. A typical post indicator valve assembly consists of an indicator post mounted on a plate above the valve extending upward from the ground or from a wall surface. At the top of the post is a lockable actuator, 
usually designed as a red metal hand wheel or a wrench style handle, which is used to open or close the valve. A small glass or plastic window on the indicator post clearly shows whether the valve is in the open or shut position. Beneath the assembly, a standard gate or butterfly valve is installed on the main water line of the fire protection system. The gate valve is then controlled by the wrench actuator, which is on the exterior of the post body. The wrench is stored on the outside of the post body and secured in either the open or closed position using a padlock or a wire seal. This prevents tampering and avoids accidental operation of the valve. When maintenance crews or emergency responders need to use the valve, they first unlock the wrench actuator, remove it from its storage point, and fit the wrench end onto the operating nut located at the top of the PIV. By turning this nut, the gate valve inside the assembly rotates, allowing them to either open or shut the water supply. The first four components are all exterior parts that remain visible above the ground. The fifth component, the gate valve, is the internal mechanism of the assembly. Like other control valves, post indicator valves must be indicating type meaning their open or closed status should be clearly visible at a glance. An indicator sign displaying both open and shut is attached to the gate valve and is visible through the visual indicator window. When the post indicator valve is in the shut position, the word shut appears in the window. As the valve is operated using the wrench, the indicator sign rotates accordingly, and once the valve is fully open, open becomes visible through the window. According to Section 1698 of the NFPA 13 Handbook, 2025 edition, outside control valves should be installed in the following order of preference. 1. Listed indicating valves located on each connection to the building, positioned at least 40 feet. 2. Control valves placed within a cut-off stair tower or in a valve room that can be accessed directly from the outside. 3. Valves installed on risers, equipped with indicating posts arranged for outside operation. 4. Key operated valves provided on each connection entering the building. In most cases, post indicator valves control the flow of water to sprinkler systems, hydrants, or other underground piping networks. They also provide a convenient way to shut off the water supply from the main line during emergency situations or when routine maintenance is required. During a building fire, an exterior wall may collapse and damage underground water mains or even create unintended openings that affect the water supply. In such cases, a post indicator valve enables firefighters to isolate and shut off water to the damaged areas. This helps maintain proper water pressure and prevents water from being wasted or diverted away from where it's actually needed. According to Section 1698 of NFPA 13, 2025 edition, and Section 629 and 63 of NFPA 24, 2025 edition, when post indicator valves are installed, the top of the post must be positioned between 32 and 40 inches above the final grade level. This requirement ensures clear visibility and convenient access for operation and inspection. This requirement do not apply to wall-mounted post indicator valves. These valves are not required to be installed at a specific height because the difference between the outside ground level and the interior floor elevation may make a fixed height impractical. However, wall post indicator valves must still be positioned so that they remain easily accessible and can be operated quickly in case of an emergency. The height above ground should be reasonable and convenient for operation. Post indicator valves should be installed in locations where they are not exposed to potential impact or mechanical damage. However, when these valves are positioned along roadways or in any area where they could be damaged, Proper protective measures should be provided to ensure their safety and continued operation. 
Post indicator valves should be installed at least 40 feet away from any building. However, if it's not possible to place them at that distance, they may be installed closer to the structure. In such cases, wall-mounted post indicator valves can also be used, provided they are positioned against blank walls, where there is little risk of injury from falling debris, and in areas where people are not likely to be exposed to smoke or heat. It is important to note that when it is not practical to install a post indicator valve, the valves may be located in pits, provided that approval is obtained from the authority having jurisdiction.